I'm singing in the rain, just singing in the rain. What a glorious feeling, I'm happy again. There was a time when we all used to sing. We sat around campfires at church and at school. We sang our stories and our dreams. We sang alone and we sang together. Nowadays, not many of us sing. We think we can't because at some stage someone has told us to be quiet. Or some of us judge ourselves against the celebrities we idolise. So I have a question, hands up, who in this audience has been told by their parents, teacher, kids, or partner, or anyone else that they can't sing? Hands up, please. Hands right up. <laughs> okay. So that's about 85% of you. About 85% of people have been told that they can't sing. Well, when I was 14, I desperately wanted to have singing lessons. My best girlfriend started having lessons. And so I went round to her house one night and I said, will you teach me the song? So we sang this song together a few times, and at the end of it she said, well, I'll play the piano and you sing it on your own now. And so she played and I sang. And then she said, Tanya, I don't think you should ever bother having singing lessons. You're not good enough. And being a 14-year-old, I believed her, just like probably many of you believed it when you were told that. And so the next year, I did backstage in the school musical. And finally, in year 11, I auditioned for the chorus of Oklahoma. And to my amazement, I got the lead role, and my friend didn't get in the chorus. And ever since then, singing has been my life's passion, joy, and inspiration. Our voices have been silenced, and it's not doing us any good. There's a taboo about speaking or singing in public. We think that people will judge us or make fun of us. Yet we were all given a voice to tune in and to express ourselves. So let's not sit in silence any longer. I want you to sit up, sit up in your seats. We're going to start off with this third of the room. So just work out which third you are. And we're all going to sing this note. Now just remember, remove your self-limiting beliefs and no one is listening to your specific voice. Okay, so here we go. We're going to go, ah, oh, everyone, breathe, ah, oh. and in the middle, ah, oh, breathe, ah, oh. excellent, and then the top, ah, oh. okay, we're going to do it together. So you start and then you keep going, just keep breathing the same note. When I do this, that means crescendo, that means decrescendo. Breathing in, and here we go. Ah, uh, keep going. Ah, uh, 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 uh. How do you feel? <laughs> Woo! Okay. So, is your brain buzzing now? Because one of the great things about singing is that it really connects you to the right side of your brain. The right hemisphere of our brain is responsible for our intuition, imagination, and all our creative functions. It connects us to a world of possibilities and all that is. The brain is like a battery. The right side charges it, and the left side uses the energy and empties it. So our goal is always to keep our mental battery charged up. However, we live in a world where we're constantly assaulted with so much information to process and analyse. We talk more to boxes and screens than we do to one another. And so it becomes fundamentally important to nurture the attributes of human beings that set us apart from machines. Love, compassion, kindness, caring, determination. I have a theory of boxes. We get born in a little bassinet box and then we go home and we live in a house if we draw it it looks like a box and we go to school and we often get taught to think in the box we go to the supermarket we come out with lots of little boxes and then we go to work and we have a box in our pocket our mobile phone we have a screen in front of us which is our computer box and we have to tick the box an awful lot and guess what when we go out of this world we go out in a right so 
I believed that life really happens and that our creative potential is unlocked between the boxes, where our mind can roam, in that space where we connect in loving relationships with others, when we go into nature, and where we do activities like meditation. But you know the best activity for getting outside the box? Well, of course, it's singing. Because the neuroscience of singing shows that when we sing, our neurotransmitters connect in new and different ways, firing up the right temporal lobe of our brain, releasing endorphins that make us smarter, healthier, happier, and more creative. And you know what's really great about this? When we do this with other people, the effect is amplified. A recent study measured the levels of oxytocin, the hormone responsible for pleasure, love and bonding, in a group of people before and after singing sessions. And the levels increased significantly after the singing sessions. Further international research shows the benefits of singing for learning and language and other skills, and for healing strokes, speech abnormalities, and depression. And when we sing together like we just did in harmony, not only do we get goosebumps and tingles and crescendo together and breathe together, but a recent study actually showed that our hearts start beating together. I mean, this is a super duper drug. It's free, accessible to all. We all have a voice. Other theories speculate that our brains developed along with music and singing as a survival mechanism. So before there were governments and nations, groups and tribes sang and danced together to build loyalty, transmit vital information and ward off enemies. Literally, those who sang well survived. Well, as well as singing, a lot of people also don't think they're creative. I work with a lot of companies and top teams on building and unleashing creativity and innovation. And it's amazing how many leaders say, but I'm not creative. Yet recently, some futurists said that creativity has become the most endangered species of the 21st century. We have a broadband culture, but not the creative thought to fill it. And a recent global study of 1,500 CEOs by IBM showed that in an increasingly complex and uncertain global environment, the most important leadership attribute is creativity. Well, Steve Jobs said that creativity is just about connecting things. And I'd like to suggest that those things might be all the experiences in your life up till this moment. So the broader and richer your experiences, the more tools you'll have in your creative toolbox for when you want or need to get creative. And I reckon the best thing to get creative is what I like to call positive human collisions. That is, connecting with people on a regular basis who are really different from you. You know we spend most of our lives talking with, dressing like, feeling safe and endorsing those who are really like us. They make us feel good about ourselves. But I think our greatest gains as human beings are when we connect to people who are really different, who challenge us and the way we think, who take us outside of our comfort zone. When we connect with those, we feel creative abrasion. And it's in that moment where we actually disagree with someone where creativity and innovation can spark. So I thought it would be really awesome to start a social enterprise, a movement, if you like, where we could bring together the power of positive human collisions with the neuroscience of singing. And so five years ago, I set up a charity called Creativity Australia. And we have a program called With One Voice. And every week, we deliberately bring together the most diverse people possible. We bring together CEOs, doctors, lawyers, grandmothers with students, people with depression and disabilities, migrants and job seekers, aged from nine to 90 of all faiths and all backgrounds. Most of the people come along saying, but I can't sing. We help them find not only their voice and their singing voice, but their voice in life. 
their meaning and their purpose. At choir each week, we sing, but we also share supper. We share our hopes and, jo- and dreams and challenges. We have a really innovative part of our program. It's called the wish list. And anyone in the choir can ask for a wish from anyone else. And so people ask for things like, I would love help with my resume. I'd like to find a job. I'd like someone to walk home with. I'd like to find a boyfriend or a girlfriend. I'd like free guitar lessons. Because everyone is in such a receptive headspace because of those fabulous endorphins and feeling much more creative, we've literally connected people to most of their wishes. We've created hundreds of jobs, work experience and mentoring opportunities. We've connected people to health services. And we've even had a marriage. (laughs) And we've connected people to incredible hope, joy and inspiration. One choir Melbourne Sings has now expanded to 15 choirs all around Victoria, in Sydney and starting in Brisbane. And we have inquiries from all over Australia and other countries for our unique with one voice model. Before I show you a short video, I'd like to tell you two short stories. This is Natalie on the screen. Natalie's from Cameroon. She came to Australia a few years ago and she joined the choir. Her sister was massacred and she now brings up her two children and her sister's child. And she'd been looking for a job as an accountant for four years when she joined the choir. On the second time she came to choir, she was crying. We said, what's wrong? And she said, I've got a job interview. I said, that's wonderful. She said, no, I don't think I can get the job. She'd experienced so much discrimination that her, she didn't believe in herself at all. So we gave her mock interviews, but most of all, we gave her love. And a little bit of her started to come back. And two weeks later, she came back to choir and she was beaming and she got the job in the call centre. Not as an accountant, but she was just wrapped to have a job to contribute to her new homeland. A few weeks later, the choir started being asked to perform at various major events and conferences. And we'd teach each of the people to share their story and what the choir meant. And the choir would sing and inevitably the audience would stand and cheer and literally grown men were crying. It was really powerful. A few weeks later, she emails me and she says, Tanya, I can't come to choir anymore. My hours have gone from 9 to 5 to 9 to 7.30. And I wrote back, and well, who's going to feed your kids? Can we speak to your supervisor? Can you speak to him? And she said, no, he never speaks to any of the migrants. Well, fate intervened. And I was asked to present a keynote speech at a major business conference. And the theme of the conference was diversity. And I said to the organiser, look, I've got this amazing diversity choir called Melbourne Sings. Do you think that they could perform at the start of the dinner? And she said, OK. And she had a look online and she made a donation to the choir and they performed three songs, three stories. And at the end of each song, the audience spontaneously stood and cheered and they were all crying. At the end of the third song, this woman comes running up to the stage and she says, can I have the mic? OK, she's got tears on her face. And she gets up and she says, my name's Catherine. And um, I'm managing director of ANZ Private Bank. And did I mention that Natalie's job um, interview was for ANZ Bank? No, that's a pretty important fact. (laughs) Anyway, so what happened was Catherine got up and, and, and she said, you know, this model of social inclusion is so awesome. You know, are we really listening to the diverse voices in our communities and organizations? I got the mic back and I said, well, thank you so much, Catherine. It is all about building bridges of understanding, not walls and boxes between us. But listen, I've got a little favour to ask you. No pressure or anything. Like, there was hundreds of people in the room. Do you think that you might help Natalie here from Cameroon with her hours at the ANZ Bank? (laughs) Well, she handed Natalie her business card. The whole audience was cheering. And the next Tuesday, Natalie turned back up to the Sofitel where we run Melbourne Sings. And we were rapt to see her and we said, Natalie, what's happening? And she said, I don't know what's going on, Tanya, but every day my supervisor, he comes to my desk and he asks me, how am I and do I have any problems? (laughs) (laughs) um, Catherine then spent further time with her, helping her with her CV. Natalie kept applying for every accounting role and she started to really believe in herself and she finally got an accounting role. Anyway, this is Beth. 
Beth has cerebral palsy. She joined our choir also, Melbourne Sings, about five years ago. Beth changed my life. You know, every week Beth comes to choir and it's the highlight of her week. And she said to her mum and carer after a few weeks, this is going to be my independent activity. She comes in the maxi taxi, we feed her, and she knows the words of every song off by heart. And every week I go along to choir hoping that Beth is there because I might be having a really grumpy Tuesday. But as soon as I see Beth, it's like, oh my God, pinch. Tanya, your problems are absolutely nothing. Here is this person who, by all rights, is caught in a box and her horizon is so big. And she's helped us all to step outside our box into a new space of gratitude and hope. So please, have a look at this video. It is amazing what can happen when you come together on a weekly basis with people who are very diverse. joined this choir since I migrated from India. I felt I found a new family in Australia. This ANZ experience has took uh, my singing to a different level. The choir has just been the most wonderful thing for my career. I advertised by a choir member, so I applied um, and fortunately I got the job. You know, like we say, the angel was behind me. They were my angel and I went through and I got the job with my ANZ band. Meeting together weekly in these programs, each of these people experience new self-esteem, hope, friendship. Uh, actually, we met in the choir last week, and this is our, our second time meet each other. And yeah, I feel very um, surprised and very thankful that uh, I can meet such a good friend. Oh, I think mean, this is the most important reason for me to keep coming. <laughs> this is why I got friends because I can't do it anything for myself. I can't feed myself, I can't feel self think That's why I got friends. <laughs> want to be, apart from my disability, I can be, no one sees my wheelchair, they see me as a person. A highlight of our year in 2011, apart from of course this afternoon, was to perform at the opening ceremony of the new Royal Children's Hospital, which was opened by Her Majesty the Queen. This Mormon Sings is a group, not only a group, just a family, a family of singers. You want to smell the beautiful perfume? You, you want to be happy? Come with me. Doesn't that give you goosebumps? You all want to join? You know, it's said that we go through our lives with much of our music unplayed. Imagine if we could just unlock a little more of the creative potential of our brain. As Mark Twain said, sing like no one's listening, love like you've never been hurt, dance like no one's watching, and live like it's heaven on earth. We are literally changing the world, one voice at a time. Thank you. <laughs>